Welcome to the Alliance for Water Efficiency's Sales Forecasting and Rate Model. In this video, we'll give you a tour of the model and help you get started using the built-in demonstration data. If you haven't already, you can visit financingsustainablewater.org where you can download a free copy of the model and the user guide. The model runs in Microsoft Excel and requires a Windows operating system with Excel 2007 or later. When you open the file, you'll be taken to the Model Overview and Instructions Worksheet. This worksheet contains important information about the model and will help you get oriented. There are two other overview and instructional worksheets in the model. Those tabs are highlighted red. This is the Rate Design Module Worksheet and the Revenue Simulation Worksheet. These tabs contain important information and we highly recommend you read them over. Back on the Model Overview and Instructions Worksheet, if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see the Run Demo button. Clicking this will populate the model with demonstration data. This will allow you to learn interactively without digging up your own demonstration data. Let's go to step one, model setup. In this worksheet, the user enters some basic information to help get started. This includes the bill tabulation year, billing units, precipitation and temperature units, the off-peak and peak season, as well as the maximum to minimum monthly production ratio. And then the user selects the customer classes. In this example, there are four customer classes. However, the user can specify up to six. Last, the user enters median household income and selects the primary residential customer class. Once this is done, the user is ready to enter the rate design module portion of the model. Step two, enter bill tabulations worksheet ask the user to enter bill tabulations for each customer class and for the off-peak and peak season. What's a bill tabulation? A bill tabulation shows the number of bills and total usage that fall into each usage bin. Again, the bill tabulation is entered for each customer class and for the off-peak and peak seasons. Step three ask the user to enter customer service charges. The first step on this worksheet is to enter the number of accounts by meter size and for each customer class for the bill tabulation year. When the number of accounts have been entered, the user can scroll down to section two. The first part of section two asks the user to enter the billing frequency. This can be monthly, bi-monthly, or quarterly. Then, the user enters customer service charges for each billing period. This is done for each customer class and for meter size. The user enters current service charges and proposed service charges. If there will be no changes to the proposed service charges, the user can enter the same value as the current service charges. Now we're ready to go to step four, design water rates. The design water rates worksheet allows the user to enter current and proposed rates for each customer class and then evaluate rate performance. The first step is to enter the demand elasticity parameters. Demand elasticity measures the percentage change in demand given a 1% change in price. The model comes with recommended short run elasticity values for each customer class and for the off-peak and peak season. When those values have been entered in the table, the user can scroll down to the specify rates section. In this section, the user can specify rates for each customer class. Currently, the single family customer class is highlighted. You can see this is broken into the off-peak season and peak season, and current rates and proposed rates can be entered. 
Current rates are highlighted red and proposed rates are highlighted green. The user can specify a uniform rate structure, block rate structure, seasonal rate structure, and a seasonal block rate structure. If a block rate structure is being specified, up to five blocks can be entered. Scrolling to the right, the user can look at rate performance for each customer class. First is the impact to annual sales volume for the current and proposed rates. Following that is the annual revenue. This is broken down into service charges, volumetric charges, and total revenue for each customer class. Then, if the user scrolls to the bottom, this value is expressed for a total of all classes. The third section of this worksheet includes information on bill impacts of proposed rates. The bill impacts information is expressed in tables as well as in a histogram that expresses information for each individual customer class. The model also includes an affordability index. The affordability index compares the median annual water cost for the primary residential customer class and median household income. Bill impacts are further assessed on the bill impacts worksheet. This worksheet contains charts that show the cumulative distribution of bill impacts for each customer class under the proposed rates. The worksheet also includes instructions on how to interpret these charts. Step 5 is the Drought Rate Adjustments Worksheet. This worksheet allows the user to evaluate the impacts of drought for the proposed rates. The user can also determine how the proposed rates would need to be adjusted in order to preserve sales revenue. The first step on this worksheet is to specify curtailment levels for each stage of drought. The user also enters an expected compliance rate, and the model calculates the expected curtailment. Section 2 allows the user to look at rate performance for each drought stage. Here we have stage 3 selected. In stage 3, we expect a 17% curtailment. If we scroll to the right and look at the rate performance, we see an expected decrease in annual sales volume of 17%. This impacts our volumetric sales by 17%, with our total revenue expected to be reduced by 11.8%. Just like the Rate Design tab, this information is available for each customer class and for a total of all classes. The user can manually change the rates for a selected drought stage and determine what changes need to occur to remain revenue neutral. The model also comes with a built-in calculator that will find revenue neutral rates. The user specifies a drought stage and then selects whether they'd like the rates to be scaled so each customer class remains revenue neutral or if all classes grouped together would remain revenue neutral. If analyzing a block rate structure, the user can also select to leave or adjust specific blocks for specific user classes. Then the user clicks the Find Revenue Neutral Rates, and the model does just that. It calculates revenue neutral rates. Now we're ready to enter the Revenue Simulation Module. The Revenue Simulation Module allows the user to evaluate the performance of current and proposed rates in the face of uncertainty. This uncertainty is related to weather, account growth, and the possibility of entering a drought. The simulation module uses random samples to assess the performance of the current and proposed rate structures over a five-year time horizon. The first step in setting up the revenue simulation module is to enter weather data. 
First, the user enters monthly precipitation totals. Then, monthly average maximum air temperature values are entered. If we scroll to the right, we can see that the user can also specify a drought stage with a specific year's weather data. Let's look at 2009. We can see in this specific year that this example utility entered a stage 2 drought. Therefore, a stage 2 drought was assigned to this year's weather. Step 7 is where the user finishes setting up the simulation module. The first thing the user needs to do is to set the account growth rates. A lower, expected, and upper estimate is entered for the forecasted account growth rates for the next five years. This is done for each customer class. In step three on this worksheet, the user can specify the likelihood of entering drought and requiring water use restrictions. If the user specified drought stages in step six with the weather data, then this section does not need to be filled out. Rather, the user can just select use step six data. The user could also choose to forego this portion of the module and select none. The final step in setting up the simulation is to select the number of simulation trials. The user can select 10, 100, 500, or 1000. For example purposes, we'll choose 100 because it takes less time than 500 or 1000. The model is currently running the simulation and when it's finished will be automatically taken to the simulation results worksheet. The simulation results worksheet provides simulation summary statistics for the current rates and proposed rates. First, we're provided summary statistics for sales volume for each of the five forecast years. Then, annual sales revenue summary statistics for each of the five years are provided. In section two, we're provided with sales volume and revenue distributions for each of the forecast years. The user can specify a year and the corresponding distributions will be displayed. Step three provides sales volume and revenue confidence interval for the current and proposed rates. The user can specify a confidence interval and the ranges will automatically change. In step four, the model calculates exceedance probability values based on revenue targets that are entered by the user. The user enters a first year revenue target, a three year cumulative revenue target, and a five year cumulative revenue target. The model then calculates the probability of meeting or exceeding these target values for both the current rates and the proposed rates. Step five allows the user to anim animate the simulation trials. Animating the simulation trials allows the user to see the random variability and uncertainty based on weather, account growth, and the possibility of entering a drought. This concludes our tour of the model, but before we go, I'd like to click over to the user guide. The user guide will be a helpful resource when you're working through the model. And to help get you started, the model contains a chapter that will walk you through a demonstration. Using the built-in demonstration data that comes with the model, you can run through a variety of exercises in Chapter 7 that will allow you to interactively learn about the model. We highly recommend running through the demonstration as it will be very helpful when you start entering your own data. Thank you for tuning in. We hope this video was helpful and we hope you find the model to be a very useful resource.